Welcome back to sunny Florida on our Saturday night. The night before regionals PC becoming almost standard nationwide now. Um, we're joined with this game, Matt Coyle versus Ian McLaughlin on Fuego versus Raikou for those of you using the usernames. And uh, Gabby's going to run us down the teams quickly. Yeah, so we got Kangaskhan, Thunderous, Groudon, uh, Crobat, Eveltal, and Amoongus from Infuego. And uh, Groudon, Xerneas, uh, Smeargle, Kangaskhan, Talonflame, and that Clefairy from Raikou. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that really leaps out, each of them has something that leaps out we don't see. Uh, Matt's bringing the Eveltal, and Ian's bringing the Clefairy. Uh, both of them almost niche uses, but I think... Early game, they want to figure out what the other one's trying to do. That's that's a certain. Yeah, I Clefairy is a very interesting Pokemon. I don't know if it's something I'd bring game one, but I think game three, if you're looking to really shake things up, Clefairy has a lot of potential to do that. Uh, no Clefairy yet. We're gonna see a Crobat Kangaskhan lead from Infuego, and then we're gonna see Raiko lead the uh, Groudon and Talonflame combo that I think he actually led last time he was on stream. I can't remember for sure, but yeah. someone in his game led Talonflame Groudon. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I like Crobat. I'm a big f fan of Crobat, and here it applies not too much pressure, really. I mean, it can put up a Tailwind. Uh, Kangaskhan can help it out. It can Super Fang for huge damage. Um, I feel like, as we see a lot this year, they'll just trade Tailwinds, most likely. Um, yeah. It's a common play. You both just, you're back on level pegging. Um, so I think that's what we could see here. Yeah, Crobat and Talonflame are both two really interesting Pokemon. We are going to see uh, Infuego set up Tailwind with his Crobat. Um, Talonflame, though, goes for the Flare Blitz onto Kangaskhan, you know, with the Sun, with, I believe, a Life Orb. That is oh just barely not goodness. enough to pick up that KO. Uh, Kangaskhan hanging on with a fraction of HP. However, it is going to die, uh, or it is going to get knocked out. Crobat, too, actually, from the eruption from Groudon. That is a fast Groudon. Yeah, that's a very quick Groudon, and Ian's just put himself in a great position. He's got the sun up. Uh, he knows Matt doesn't have anything to answer his weather. All he can do is bring in more sun, um, and then he just throws out damage. Uh, Flare Blitz, eruption, yeah, that's, that's too much damage for Matt to handle, and he's already on his back, too. Um, you know, the only thing he got out of that time was a Tailwind, um, which, although good, not, not denying it's good, um, I mean, can't really just mow through all four, and Ian's quite easy to set up a tailwind this turn. Yeah, Ian's in a really interesting position where he could tailwind. He can't really attack again with Talonflame unless he goes for the Brave Bird, which I don't think will do enough damage here. Uh, Ian's Groudon will protect, and uh, Thunderous taunts the Talonflame, getting the advantage there due to that tailwind from the previous turn, and stops Raikou's Talonflame from setting up tailwind. And then we're going to see Talonflame get knocked out by that rock slide. Yeah, I mean, that's that's actually a good turn for Matt. You know, he's pulled it back to 3-2 three, three in Ian's favor, unfortunately. But, you know, he has shown it's got rock slide. Uh, good information for Ian, particularly with Talonflame on his team. Uh, yeah, and the Tailwind paid dividends from there because he got to stop the Tailwind. He got to stop the Tailwind, and he got to trade for the Talonflame. I know that we are down right now. Uh, you know, Raikou only has... Uh, or, excuse me, Infuego has two Pokemon left, uh, Raikou has three, but I really think the ball is in Infuego's court. I I think Matt is in an amazing position right now to just go for the Prestwis Blades and maybe a Thunderbolt or something onto the Kangaskhan. Yeah. He picked up a lot of momentum in that turn, this, you know, particularly in this format with the big damage dealing. You know, it's really good to have that momentum. Ian can stop it though, and he does right now with a fake out. But he faked out the Thunderous, which I think is interesting, leaving the Groudon free to go for the Precipice Blades or Eruption. I guess we're seeing two spe special Groudon on the field right now. Well, I think Matt's is mixed. It showed the Rock Slide. It does get a That's critical true. hit on Genghis Khan, just dropping it in one. As we were saying, the momentum is really in Matt's favor here. He went first with his Eruption because of the Tailwind. And, he, you know, he managed to do enough damage to stop Ian's Groudon, really dealing damage back. So while we jested about it first turn, that Tailwind is paying dividends. Seriously. He did get Thunderous to reveal its item, though, before the start of Game 2. Uh, we did see a Citrus Berry right now, so that's really valuable information. I uh, can't help but wonder how much Ian's going to reveal about his Xerneas right now. Yeah. Uh, it's probably Geomancy, but, like, I mean, who knows, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it would be really nice to Geomancy, but I feel like it just doesn't have that time right now. Uh, it goes really safely, it protects, trying to burn down those Tailwind turns. Um, Double protect, because yeah. I think Tailwind's due to expire this turn. Yeah, this is the last turn of Tailwind. 
Um, Metro's off Thunder Wave, so he's really looking to stop that now. Yeah, I find Thunder Wave sometimes is almost a better counter to Geomancy than Taunt because yeah. if they don't go for the Geomancy, then you can, you know, they're paralyzed. There's not really anything they can do. Yeah, that's another level of sort of a problem that the opponent has to overcome. This turn he gets to Thunder Wave anyway. It's not a problem. Uh, he should be in a really good quick speed. Um, Xerneas goes next on the field, picking up the KO on Thunderous with the Dazzling Gleam. Bringing Groudon down to the yellow. I wonder if it's going to come down to a speed tie here. Uh, Ooh. All right. So Precipice Blades will connect with Ian's Groudon, and it does pick up the KO. However, we now have a paralyzed full health Xerneas versus a half health Groudon. Yeah, this is an interesting position. I mean, Matt really has that out. We've seen it in a number of games, all levels. Thunder Wave will straight win your games. It's It just has that ability. He at least gets to go first now because of the paralysis, but if he's still getting hit, then yeah, it's gonna hurt. Yeah, oh, if Xerneas dodges word. a second Precipice Blades, Moonblast will connect with that Groudon. Uh, does not pick up the KO Ooh. because we have not seen that uh, Geomancy boost, but it does get a special attack drop. Yeah, I mean, Matt just has to play the game now and hope for those full powers. Uh, he's now <laughs> doubling down on the making life difficult for Ian by going for classic <laughs> power flinch, and Ian still gets off Moonblast. That is some incredibly bad luck for Matt yeah, right there. I mean, Matt's done all he can. He's paralyzed it, he's thrown attacks at it, but he's, Ian still managed to attack through all that. Um, yeah. And while the momentum was swinging, it, it swung right back to Ian when he didn't get a paralyzed turn or he, didn't, he avoided the precipice blades. Yeah. Um, it's also an interesting position to be in going into game two. I mean, it's pretty safe to say that all of that, uh, you know, bad luck won Ian the game there. It, I don't know how you'd play that, because do you count it a win? Do you count it a loss? Like, I mean, I think Matt showed a lot of tricks as well. I mean, he showed it's a mixed crowd on with the rock slide, um, which, you know, isn't the most common thing. He showed off his thunderous item, yeah. And he showed off a, a good sort of strategy there as well. Ian just sort of played fairly straightforward, put some damage down, tried to set the right things up. You know, I, I think Matt's got a lot of information to try and pull it back now. Um, he just needs to get a bit luckier. Maybe if he believed a little more in his Pokemon. You know, a loving trainer. <laughs> a couple more of those uh, Poke blocks, you know, some... Poffins. Are we still poffin. going for Poffins? <laughs> anyway, back to game. Back to the game. We are going to see a Thunderous Evelta lead on Matt's side of the field against the same lead from Ian. We're going to see that uh, Talonflame and that Groudon again. So I guess Ian is just hoping that, you know... Lots if of damage broke, and persistence. Don't fix it. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's interesting. I, I know there are some combinations that are available from that side. Uh, I don't want to ruin them for anyone, but these Pokemon pair rather nicely. I um, look forward to seeing that because yes. I, I don't really know. I have it, ideas. It battle isn't commonly <laughs> seen. Um, but, you know, if it gets the right kind of partners with it, it's going to cause some problems. Groudon's not wanting to get affected by these, <laughs> so it just protects. And he gets that Tailwind off pretty much... Well, we'll see how much it yeah. costs them. So, I, I think it's safe to say, though, that Ian, you know, learned from the result of Game 1 and realized, you know, that having that Tailwind turn 1 can be huge. Uh, Snarl's going to connect with that Talonflame. Thunderbolt as well, which will knock it out. Uh, so, it's almost like the last game where, you know, Got you the trade. Tailwind up, but the Pokemon that said it is, is gone. Yeah. Like, long gone from the field. Um, which is a good thing. We've said it before, you know, you want to get the Tailwind up, and unless it's something really aggressive... Then just get it out of there. Yeah. He now gets the Kangaskhan in, so he can then continue to disrupt. You he know? can fake out. You know, it might be running Double Edge or Return or maybe even Low Kick or Power Up Punch. I mean, Kangaskhan is still one of those Pokemon that can really do a lot of things in this metagame, and you can't make any predictions based off of it. Yeah, it's it's still got a really interesting and wide move pool. Uh, it straight up just goes Mega, and no reason not to. Um, getting the Parental Bond extra damage as well. Uh, maybe, going the, maybe a fire punch? Is that a fire punch? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see Fake Out onto that Thunderous. Uh, maybe Ian doesn't want to mess around with Paralysis again. It's hard to say. A Sucker Punch from that Eveltal will connect with the Groudon, who goes for the Eruption. I think Matt's done really well there. You know, like we were saying with Water Spout on the Kyogre earlier, if you can get just enough damage to take it away from 100%, the power drops off, and the Sucker Punch doesn't mind the Tailwind. 
So yeah, they're in really good positions here. Yeah, I and mean, I think I think that chip damage on Groudon really came into play because Thunderous survived with maybe 20, 25 HP. And it got to trigger its Citrus Berry. And as it well. got to trigger the Citrus Berry, so he has one turn here where he could prankster taunt something. He could prankster Thunder Wave the Kangaskhan, which yep. is exactly the play he goes for. I mean, setting Tailwind up is good for Ian, but as we've now seen, the Veltal and the Thunderous have a plus one priority move anyway, so they're, they're not too bo bothered at all. Yeah, Groudon goes for a second eruption, which will pick up the KO on Thunderous, brings Eveltal down to half. It's doing nothing to that Eveltal. Yeah, I mean, Excuse the Eveltal me. protected that turn, obviously he just didn't want to deal with it, but it helps. If he's if the Kangaskhan's paralyzed, Sucker Punch will be going first. So, Ian's Kangaskhan can't benefit from Dark Aura if he's looking to suck a punch. So we'll see. I mean, it doesn't really look that favorable for Ian right now. I think there's maybe one turn of Tailwind left. Yeah, I mean, Tailwind's about to expire, and his Kangaskhan's paralyzed. Uh, he can't set it back up. The Talonflame died. Uh, he brings out Groudon just to keep it safe. Probably doesn't want to take big damage from Kangaskhan. And instead, Xerneas comes in, which is an interesting play. I mean, if that's what you have in the back, so be it. But I would wonder, you know, why not keep Xerneas safe just for a couple turns longer to maybe, you know, Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam the Eveltal? Yeah, I mean, Eveltal, you know, as in the story, they're rivals. And here, Eveltal just wins. Uh, it's, it's got the better typing. And it uh, even picks up a Snarl on that Xerneas, which drops its special attack down to minus one, which... I don't know if it makes a difference against the Eveltal, but against that Kangaskhan, definitely. Going for the low kick into Ian's Kangaskhan, picks up the crit. I don't think it mattered. I mean, I, It didn't matter, but... For some reason, when the baby comes out, the pouch <laughs> gains weight. And that extra weight puts it just over the weight limit to really do... I think it's base 120 with low kick. So, uh, it grew. And <laughs> unfortunately, it did, you know, hurt itself in a way. We're going to see Groudon come back out on the field, and I guess now it's just a really big guessing game. Yeah, I mean, Kangaskhan doesn't have the fake-out pressure that it usually likes. Matt does have something in the back, though. He does. Which is something really nice for him. Um, you know, although he's struggling with the Xerneas, he doesn't really have an established answer here. You know, he's definitely got something else. Xerneas is going to protect here, probably anticipating a double edge of something like that into the Xerneas slot, which is, again, what happens. Uh, Snarl will connect with that Groudon, uh, dropping the special attack by a lot. really good damage. It does exceptional damage. It does exceptional damage, and it also, you know, further reduces Eruption's power. Yeah, that did nothing to that Kangaskhan. I think he's he's got the... Uh, understanding of this Groudon. It's really special focus. It's really there to put down big eruptions. If he can lower special attack and reduce its health, eruptions doing little to nothing. We're going to see Kangaskhan successfully connect double edge with that Xerneas. Uh, doesn't pick up the KO. It does a lot of damage. It though, does a lot. Essentially in range for Eveltal to just deal with it. Which I believe is what we're going to... Oh, oh, no! no. <laughs> Never mind! Ian's Pokemon just clinging on. I mean, their special attacks are now both at minus two, so whatever they throw back isn't going to do much. Um, maybe fishing for a critical hit? Oh, Ooh. unfortunately, Eveltal lives with just a sliver of health. Groudon goes for Precipice Blades, which will probably pick up the KO on Kangaskhan, but I would think that Eveltal could just snarl. I mean, it's faster. It's, yeah, it's now quicker. It's, you know, it's there. It's a good information for Matt as well, though. He knows that this Groudon, like most we've seen tonight, are mixed. You know, the Precipice Blades on the physical side, the Eruption, and uh, Matt just brings in a Groudon of his own. Uh, we get the nice primal animation, <laughs> but I think he's wrapped it up. So. Yeah, definitely. Having that Groudon in the back sealed the deal for Matt as we move on into Game 3. Yeah, I, I mean, there's really nothing. These are both in range of Snarl, and uh, it would appear that the Eveltal is quicker. There's not really a speed tie to be discussed here. Yeah, I mean, it's possible that, uh, you know, Ian could try and, I don't know, it looks like Eveltal is actually protecting this turn. I feel like Eveltal is a little scared. Yeah. Um, just in case, he hasn't got the secure knowledge in the speed. Um, it did go first last time, which we could say, oh, that's a speed tie. That's and he very won it. true. You know, better safe than sorry, and that does little to nothing. 
Unfortunately, that chip damage from that dazzling gleam is not going to be enough to allow Xerneas to yeah, survive the eruption. <laughs> brave Xerneas, you tried, <laughs> but you did not come far enough. And this will just be mapped to round out the game. And take us to game three in our yeah. second set of Top Cup. So it's kind of an interesting question for both players. It feels like they're fairly evenly matched here. What do you bring? Do you try and just completely counter what you think your opponent's going to bring? I, I mean, they're I not know. going in as blind. First two games, they're still gathering information. Um, interestingly enough, both games, the player that sets the Tailwind loses. Yeah. Um, it could be interesting for them to say, no, no more Tailwind. Uh, clearly not benefiting me. <laughs> it's, it's hard to Tailwind with a Thunderous as well, because he can just, with the exception of Groudon, just pop a Thunder Wave back on it. Yeah, so maybe Tailwind isn't the play. Maybe it is for Enfuego, I don't know. But I think if I were Raikou, I'd definitely consider... I mean, I want to see the Clefairy. I don't know what the Clefairy does. I, I want to see it. <laughs> I'm not sure if the Clefairy is what he needs here. I mean, it's used to be used in particular for redirection. This year, I don't know if you want to pull these attacks towards you. They're quite strong, and Matt has a lot of spread damage. You know, he's used Snarl, he's used Eruption, he's got Precipice Blades. N none of those are fun attacks to be taking. No, so it really isn't. So maybe Clefairy stays benched. <laughs> Oh, well, maybe next time, Clefairy. Maybe next time. Yeah, maybe tomorrow, the big boy regional. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see uh, Matt lead the Kangaskhan and the Thunderous. Again, feel feeling very 2015 right now, except then we see Xerneas Smeargle. So. I think one side's quite 2016, the other side's quite 2015. Yeah. It's Battle of the Meadows right yeah. here. <laughs> so, I mean, it, we haven't seen the Smeargle yet. Ian hasn't brought out the Smeargle. We saw how disruptive it was in the previous round from Ashton. Um, and I feel like it would be built a little better, trained a little better, um, or look differently rather than better, let's put it that way. Yeah, um, it's weird. Smeargle is one of those Pokemon where, like, even though everybody essentially runs the same four moves on it, it feels like almost every trainer has a different way they play it, and it's just almost a different Pokemon, like, depending on who's, you know, pressing the buttons behind the screen. Yeah, it, it really helps that you can patch your team's weaknesses with it. Um, you know, there are a couple of staples on it, sort of fake-outs, uh, things like that. Spiky Shield is definitely one of them. Kangaskhan attacking right into it. And Thunderous goes for the Thunder Wave into the Xerneas slot. Ooh. I missed that. What did the Smeargle get as a boost? We got a raise in evasion, but oh. a lowering in accuracy. Well, so while it may not be getting hit, it's going to be harder for it to hit its dark voids. And this is the joy of Smeargle. Much like the joy of painting with Bob Ross. <laughs> uh, obviously channeling that with its character design. Um, you know, Sometimes things are just happy little accidents. That's what you get. I just hope he goes for the Glacier White. I mean, that's my favorite color. Yeah, so. I, fantastic <laughs> color. As we can see, that evasiveness boost already paying dividends. I believe Smeargle just dodged both the Thunder Wave and the Double Edge it from did. that Kangaskhan. It did. Because, I mean, he did use Follow Me, so he did redirect both attacks on the field towards it. But Smeargle it didn't matter. care. Yeah, that, that's... He's really lucked out there, and I, I think it's fair to say with that Smeggle play, Ian got more than he bargained for. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, he got the boost, and then he just didn't get hit. And he just got another evasiveness boost, yeah, and another accuracy drop. Exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same in turn two. So this, this Smeggle's free now. This Smeggle is, you know... He can just paint his happy little trees, and you yep. know... I direct mean, all the attacks towards him, and Cernius is free to Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam. Like, it can do whatever here. Uh, we are going to see Kangaskhan retreat and Groudon come out in its place, maybe hoping to, you know, take less damage from the Xerneas now that it has gotten the Geomancy boost up. Yeah, I mean, he's looking to then bring in the spread moves, because Follow Me is great against these single target Pokemon, but he really needs spread moves, he needs them now. Um, it's fair to say. And he's now got the Kangaskhan fake out support for later. Which is huge, I think, given the fact that, you know, Smeargle can just wave its finger and just keep all damage away from Xerneas for a turn. A uh, Thunder oh. Wave does connect with that Smeargle. Unfortunately, it's not a damaging <laughs> move. The one thing he did want to get through was some damage. Um, but now, like, now that Smeargle has a 30% chance of, you know, not being able to follow me, which... If you keep rolling dice here, maybe Matt will get lucky to make up for the yep, uh, plus four evasion. Not so useful with the plus attack. And the speed down, I mean, that's a trade-off. He's, he's only, you know, plus four evasion. Yeah. Um, I mean, he is paralyzed as well. I would think that if he wasn't paralyzed, that minus speed would be a lot more important. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter now. He's going to be moving essentially last unless he uses something with priority. But it's the chance that he doesn't get to do anything. Uh, he doesn't get to follow me. 
Um, all right, so Fake Out goes into the Protect from the Smeargle, or from the Xernia. Smeargle dodges the Precipice Blades and goes for Dark Void. It is at mi minus two accuracy. Kangaskhan dodges, but Groudon decides to take a nap. Yeah, that is that is the one thing that Matt really needed awake. That's the damage dealer here, um, the spread damage dealer as well. So of all the things to avoid, I'd say that was that was not the not the way he wanted it round. No, I mean it's good. Oh wow, we just got a forfeit from uh, Matt. Yeah, I think so that's it. That's that's game. I mean, I think Matthew's uh, seen enough nonsense for one game. Uh, as a veteran player, he doesn't really want to deal with that. So yeah, I think I mean it's the right decision. He doesn't have to drag it out. And uh, Ian moves on to the finals of this Premier Challenge. Yeah. Um, do we have results from the other side yet? Are they still playing? Uh, while we are waiting on uh, results, just want to thank Moves everybody. Moves runner, runner TJ. Yeah. <laughs> um, it looks like players are getting up to shake hands, so yeah. I'm assuming they're done. But yeah. There's some pretty... I mean, Smeagle is divisive in the community. All right, so it looks like our finals match will be Raikou, or Ian versus Kurt, who we saw beat Ashton earlier. So it should be a good match. Um, we will be back in a couple minutes with that. Until then, thanks for watching. Yeah, that's it.